Hello, and welcome back to Storky Farmstead. All right, guys, three days ago, I did a foliar spray of worm tea on my plants. And I mean, like, it grew. It really grew. They all grew. So, by the way, just to stop and point this out, this is peppermint. And it's also planted over there. It's great pest deterrent. They all grew. Now, when I sprayed it, I told you that I was going to try spraying at night. I was a little concerned with the humidity that we have in Louisiana that I could possibly cause a fungal issue on my plants, but obviously it didn't. Um, they're gorgeous. Now, when I sprayed, I told you that some of these plants on this end and the opposite end behind me, uh, they just seem to be struggling a little. A little on the yellow side for my taste. Not getting as big as those down there. But I pointed out this one and I said, we're gonna see if this little beauty gets any better. So in just a second, I'm gonna replay the clip and show you how yellow this plant was a couple of days ago before I sprayed it. It looked a little more yellow than this guy right here. This one is more yellow than that. But now it's closer to the one beside it. Okay, so the point is that the foliar sprays really help. Your plants absorb a tremendous amount of nutrients through their leaves. I mean, think of it like your skin. This is their skin. So they can absorb through this. So you have to be really careful and you have to really think through, what am I putting on my plants? Because whatever this plant absorbs, that is what is gonna show up in the food that you eat, okay? It just makes sense. If your skin absorbs something, if your lungs absorb something, that shows up in your bloodstream, right? So that same concept is gonna work with whatever you put on your plants is going to inevitably, there's no way around it, end up in the fruits and vegetables that it produces. So when we say that we're organic, there's a reason for that. When you think of things like pesticide, fungicide, herbicide, it has an I-C-I-D-E in it. Look up what that means. It means to kill. So if you're putting something on your plant that has a purpose to kill something else and the plant absorbs it, if it can kill the fungicide, the weeds, and the pest, in the right dose, it will kill you. Now, the theory behind that is you're not going to drink any of those. But after years and years of eating food that is doused in those chemicals, they build up in your system. There are scientific studies right now, that you can look them up on Google, Google it, educate yourself, that in utero, in a mother's body, the amniotic fluid around her baby, there has been known when they have drawn that amniotic fluid in women in America to have up to 26 pesticides inside of the amniotic that her baby, amniotic fluid that her baby is growing in. So think about that. If you're nursing, if you're pregnant, if you intend to get pregnant, if you're 80 years old and you feel terrible and you want to feel better, try to find somebody that's not putting those toxic chemicals on their plants and inevitably getting it into their food. And it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg. It honestly doesn't.
Okay, so I just wanted to show you a close-up of the tomatoes. These guys are doing great. And if you notice that the uh, leaves are blowing, I'm really excited. We have a nice gentle wind. This is in June in South Louisiana. Or Central Louisiana. We're kind of in between. I go back and forth claiming which part of the state I'm from. Anyway, for tomato plants to pollinate, they either need bees or wind to get the pollen to move. So you could wake, you could walk up and gently shake them, but there's actually kind of a, a frequency that they like that gets the flower to release the pollen. So you have both male and female on the tomato plant. So that's exciting, self-pollinates. That's just something to think about. I just wanted to show you the tomato plants. Everything's doing phenomenal. They're really starting to get to a size now to grab onto this uh, trellis and go on and climb up. It looks like I'll be uh, trimming some more leaves back off of them. But anyway, you guys have a blessed day. Remember, you, you're going to reap what you sow. So if you need tomato plants, you have to plant tomato seeds. If you need encouragement, be encouraged, encouraging to somebody else. So just a little food for thought. If you really want to know how the principle of sowing and reaping can be applied in your life, start a garden any size. And you're going to understand that concept so much better, that principle so much better in your personal life than you ever have. If you have never had the opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like to extend that opportunity to you right now. And you can repeat out loud everything that I'm fixing to say. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask Jesus into my heart. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. Wash me white as snow. Cleanse me, redeem me, rejuvenate me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. Have a blessed day, everyone.